Hi, in this video we're going to give an overview of the simulation plugins in GDS Factory. So you can read more about the simulation plugins uh, on the documentation. Uh, so we're going to show one example for each of the plugins. So first we're going to start with MPB mode solver simulations. Then we're going to do MIP FTDD simulations of the components. And then we're going to take those components and connect them into a circuit to do a circuit simulation. And for that, you can either use uh, any of the open source ones available. Um, I'm going to show up with Symfony, but the same thing could be done in SAX. And uh, the nice thing of Symfony is that we will be able to show also like a Monte Carlo circuit variability, similar to what you can see here. So you can go through the tutorial. You can also read the API. So on the API, if you go to most of our plugins, you will be able to see what are the functions available for these mode solver plugins, as well as the FTD simulation plugins, as well as the circuit simulation. So without any further ado, let's get started. Um, so I have downloaded this. Um, um, basically, you need to install the GDS factory, uh, and you need to also install the UBCPDK. So this one, we're going to simulate some of the components from the UBCPDK which is an open source PDK available uh, on GitHub. Uh, both of them are uh, in the GDS factory organization, so you will need the UBC PDK and you will need the GDS factory PDK to run these examples. Uh, so let's start with the silicon refractive index um, and let's compute the mode of a strip weight gate, like a fully edged 500 nanometer weight gate surrounded by oxide. So you can see the modes, uh, so this is the first order mode, the fundamental T mode of the way gate, which has an effective index of 2.44. Um, now we import the UBC PDK because we have um, the Kelly LGDS factory plugin installed. And we can also see uh, as we run uh, examples or components, we can see them also in Kelly out. But uh, you, it, you, you here you, you don't you don't need to leave the notebook environment. But just so you're aware that you can do both. So this one has it's a splitter has three pores. So before you run an FTD simulation, it's it's important to make sure that the simulation looks correct. The pore monitors are correct. That the 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 pores extend over the PML. Uh, so you can see here the in red you can see the port the source and in blue you can see the monitors So I'm gonna run the same thing with running cons true. It's gonna be very fast because we're using a file cache uh, Which means that the simulation has already run before so it's gonna grab the re simulation results already from the file um, So you can see here it's it's loaded from a path um, And you can plot them you can see it's a roughly it's a 50% power splitter. So we get our roughly like a 50% of the power at 1550. It's, it's a bit, uh, it loses an extra dB. Um, but you can also, so this is a full 3D FTD simulation, but you can also do a 2.5D, which is less accurate, but it's much faster because you're simulating a, a problem that it's 3D, but you're collapsing one of the dimensions by doing an effective index appro approximation. Um, so you can also do this, and we can, you can compare both uh, the, basically the 2.5D versus the 3D. So the 2.5D gives a little bit lower loss. Um, another thing you can do, you can exploit pore symmetries. Uh, so basically these are uh, uh, to, to save computation. So for example, you have this band, you can also see the band here. Um, to, to, to see, uh, to compute these parameters, you will need to do two uh, excitations. So you will need to do two simulations, each of which needs to have the port at the different, the, the source at a different port. But because we have kind of like a symmetry, we can also use this function called a one by one, uh, which will basically uh, exploit the symmetries of the S parameters. And this will basically save the simulation. And this is how you will define it. So. Uh, for pore symmetries, uh, even better than a pen is to, to use a crossing. So a crossing, all the four pores are completely symmetrical. So you can actually export the pore symmetries of a crossing where you only need to um, basically do one simulation and you can get the full uh, 
um, excitation. So you can excite only one port, and you can get using the of the other four port monitors, you can get the S11, which is the reflection. S1, uh, let me see, S. S13 will be the transmission and S12 and S14 will be the, the basically the crosstalk of the crossing. Um, and yeah, we can do the same thing. We can see here it's also very fast because we are using the file cache. I, I mean, first we're running with false, so this is just to visualize it looks correct. But when we run with true, you will see that this is very fast. Uh, because we have run the simulation before, but if I change any parameter, like I change the resolution or any other thing that makes the simulation different, this will take uh, like a few minutes to run. Um, but this is very good to have it for like a demo purposes, uh, where we have also the instantaneous response almost. So at 1550, you can see that this crossing loses in the order of 0.5 dB. So this is the transmission. But you can port any other um, any other parameter, so you can see this one one. It has roughly like minus twenty five to minus forty, uh, basically back reflection. Uh, so you can choose. Another thing you can do when do doing this large scale simulation is to use a uh, multi core, uh, where where you divide the problem into multiple cores, and speed up the simulation in that way. So uh, here we use MPI to run the simulation of a coupler. So a coupler is basically a, a four port devices where you have an SND couple the light from one input to another output. But there's also some light that goes straight. So this is the through and this is the coupling port. So and depending on the gap and the length of the, the, this propagation, you will have a different amount of coupling. So you can have this from zero to 100% coupling depending on these values and depending on the wavelength. And you will see here that we're running with four cores. So this, uh, we're doing the same trick here. We're we running with a file cache. You can see the files already exist. So it just grabs it from the cache. And you can plot this parameter simulations there. Let, let's do a batch simulation. You can also run a batch of simulations. So a batch of simulation basically runs multiple simulations in a queue in multiple cores using MPI. So we're going to do an example of just running on a, a straightway gate. And you can see that, I mean, this is also very fast because of the file cache. But we could, in principle, distribute this uh, uh, in different simulations. So we apply, we use eight cores and we use only four cores per every simulation. This will allow you to run two, two simulations in parallel. Um, and if there's more simulations than cores, it will basically queue them. And this is also for um, a ring coupler. Um, so make sure the simulation is correct. You run it here. And then we see these parameters. Um, something maybe also useful to do is to to run these as simulation markers. So directly on the layout, you can see where the source and outputs are. So for that, we, we basically put similar colors that MIP uses. So we use blue for monitors and red for source. And we can also run in 3D, so you can see your layout. In this case, I didn't the, the, uh, put the colors of the marker, so they are black. But you can change that on your layer stack. And finally, what we're going to do is gonna, we're going to take the, the simulations, uh, basically, uh, we're going to take the different parameters of every component to simulate a, a max and interferometer. So for that, first we're going to do it with Symfony. Um, so Symfony is based on scikit-rf, um, and it's an RF package, and we're going to take uh, this Y splitter, we already simulated the S parameters, on that Y splitter, we're going to take a bend and a straight. So using three components, we can simulate a complex circuit. And in this case, this complex circuit is an MDI which has 10 micron imbalance between top and bottom arm. So it's going to show a uh, spectrum. So we're going to simulate the spectrum from 1550 15 nanometer to 1600 nanometers. And then 
you will see it, uh, that it has some wavelengths where destructively interferes. For this wavelength, uh, the, the f it will accumulate more phase on the bottom arm, which is longer, and it will destructively interfere. If we increase the delta length, 20 micron, you can see it doubled here. You can see the, uh, the basically it doubled the length here on the bottom arm. The, uh, you can see the, that you can also use the same circuit model with different values. In this case, the, the, the straights here are longer. So because we double the delta length, the FSR will be half of it. And uh, finally, we can take into account like a uh, variability of the group index of the fabrication process. So due to fabrication and wafer variation, so this is basically width and height variations across the wafer. Um, your foundry is going to have a sigma defective index, a sigma group index, and sigma dispersion. Um, and if you get these values from the foundry, you can actually run like a, a Circuit Monte Carlo. So in this case, it's running uh, 10 uh, simulations of the circuit. And in this case, it's changing the, the, the model of the waveguide to take into account this uh, group, group effective index and an ineffective index variation. What, what actually really matters for this kind of like interferometer is the group index, which is um, the delay that suffers the light through it. And you can see that the MTI spectrum now is all over the place. So there's different colors represent, every color represents a different run. And that shows that, uh, that yeah, you, your, your filter can be anywhere within the FSR. Um, and, and finally, the last thing is that we're gonna show you how to do this also with, with SACS. Um, so with SACS, you need to have uh, the Legitimate Factory version. And, uh, actually here, you need to, instead of this one, you need to use uh, sax read uh, model from CSV. So this is basically, uh, you have your same idea. We have your the models for every of your components. Uh, we define the net list of the circuit and then we can simulate uh, basically uh, the spectrum and here you can see the spectrum and we can also do the same thing for a different circuit where we do instead of 10 micron we can do 20 micron and you will see we can copy paste this here and then let's do a 20 micron uh, So you can see here that the length equals 20 and we do the same thing here so they, they only need these two steps because yeah those are where we get the net list from and then we need to plot it so let's we're gonna see the same thing that basically because we we cut the length yeah, I forgot to add here MCI20. Uh, so this is MCI20, get net list, and then we simulate it. And here you can see too uh, that the FSR is half of what it had. So so what we've shown uh, in this factory documentation. So what we've shown is that uh, we've shown like uh, an overview of the simulation plugins. So we have started with the mode solver. We've shown MPB mode solver. Um, is similar API for the Tidy 3D mode solver, which is also open source. We've shown the FTDD simulation using MIP in this case, um, that we simulate the S parameters of every component. And we have connected the S parameters of each component into a circuit using both Symfony and SAX. So um, I hope you find this helpful and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.